So I've been teaching a series called I Am Salty. And it starts with this premise that we are not salty as the streets would say, I'm salty because you tried me. We're, we're talking about being salty from the aspect of Jesus teaching his disciples who are leaders that in order for you to change the world, you got to be salty. Because whatever salt touches, it changes. Here's what Jesus did not want us to do. Jesus did not want us to spend all of our days salting the salted. Which means he don't need you saltying those who are already Christians. Your salt is no good amongst Christians. Your salt is better when it's spread throughout the world. It's better when it's spread throughout the church. It's better when it's spread throughout the business community. It's better when it's spread in the library, at Walmart, when there's only a couple cashiers and you're in line with somebody. At Target, where you're there. The Amazon driver that comes to your door. The garbage man that picks up your trash. Can you add salt to his day by being generous? And, and usually when you are generous and kind, people want to know why. And that's your great opportunity to say, man, I'm just a believer and I just want to influence people. I just want to, I just want to show you the distinctive difference of how believers operate. You got to be salty. But leadership is an important aspect of every part of life. I can tell how your life is going by who you have not listened to. And I can also tell the quality of your life by who you have listened to. Leadership is important. Genesis 37 is a story we've been talking about Joseph. Joseph is not a pastor. Let's get that very clear. Joseph is not a pastor. He's just a regular person that has a dream that God makes a business leader. Notice that when Jesus picked his disciples, he did not pick preachers. He picked regular people. He picked cusses. He picked partiers. He didn't go around looking for those that wanted to be in the Sanhedrin or those that wanted to be in the Pharisee club. He went by the areas that people would not go by. He went by Cleo's. <laughs> he went by, if you know where that is, let's talk after service. We got to pray. <laughs> he, he, he went by the high places. He went by the hills of Pine Hills. He went to Carver Shores. He went to Windermere. He, he didn't just go to the churches that were around. He went to where he could find people influence them and change their lives. But I can submit to you that you can have a college degree and still not know how to be a leader. It's amazing how we can interview people and their resumes are amazing, but when you give them people, they don't know what to do with people because they're book smart, but their books don't translate into leadership. Leadership is important. And the higher you go, Leadership matters even more. You don't want anybody doing surgery on you that's good with the books, but when they get time to operate, they get nervous. I'm like, oh my God, this is so much. Oh my goodness, blood everywhere. I don't know what to do. You want someone that knows how to operate when it matters. Genesis 37, verse 23, everything's about leadership. Relationships about leadership. Who's going to bend? Who's going to give? This morning, I have so many notes for you. Your brain is going to be on overload when you leave this place. Because leadership is one of my favorite things to talk about. Because you are only as successful as your capacity and bandwidth to lead. Genesis 37, 23 says this. Genesis 37, I'm going to read Genesis 37. I'm going to go to Genesis 39. I'm going to go to Genesis 40. We're not going to read all of those but I'm going to cover all those chapters. I encourage you to read it. I know we don't have Sunday school anymore, and I know some of you don't know who Joseph is, but Joseph is a biblical person that is a type of Jesus. His name means increase. 
he sold by his brothers for pieces of silver. Jesus is sold by his brothers for pieces of silver. He is the last born of many brethren, of all of his brothers. Jesus was the second born after Adam. So there are parallels to them. Joseph's name means increase, but in order for you to get increase, you got to appreciate his story. Because a lot of us want increase, but we don't want to go through what it takes to increase. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe. They ripped his robe. Somebody say ripped. They ripped him of his robe, the ornament robe he was wearing. Remember, his father gave him this robe because his father said, you're my son that's favored. So he gave him a robe, which I don't think is a very good idea. But so all your kids ain't got no jacket that's colorful. You give one kid a jacket that's colorful, what do you think is going to happen? He's going to get picked on. He's going to get bullied. He's going to get introduced to something he never prepared for. Because favoritism produces blows. Whenever you're God's favorite, don't, don't sit there and shout, I want, I want the favor of God on my life. Well, if you want the favor of God on your life, then that means you're willing to be picked on. You're going to get shot at. You're going to get fired at. You're going to be the subject of text conversations. You're going to be the subject of Facebook posts. You're going to be the subject of community conversation. Why? Because whoever has the coat gets the criticism. Y'all ain't talking to me this morning. And they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it, which is a miracle because if there was water in it, he would have drowned. That's crazy. Your own brothers are willing to drown you because you got a coat you ain't asked for. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their caramels were loaded with spices, balm, myrrh. They were on their way to take them down to Egypt, Judah, Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover him up with his own blood? Now remember, Judah's name means praiser. The praiser is the one that wants to kill you. Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay hands on him. After all, he's our brother, our own flesh. The brothers agreed, so when the Midianite merchants came by his brothers, they pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites. All of this, even though they did this, God did not want this to happen, but because it happened, God used it. So now don't say that, oh, this is what God wanted. No, some things are our decision. But God in his sovereignty uses their decision and ensures that he gets to a place called Egypt so that he can be in a position that he could not have gotten to without his brother's betrayal. Now, verse chapter 39, it goes like this. Chapter 39 says, Joseph now is in Egypt. He gets promoted. He's with the king. He's with Potiphar. Potiphar is the man. Potiphar is that dude. Everybody want to be with Potiphar. Potiphar got a big old house on the lake. He's got uh, servants. And he says to Joseph, you my guy. I'm going to trust you to lead everything in my house. Now, Joseph is a well-built man, the scripture says. And all of a sudden, he's in there working. Well, he's working doing what the house is required. Potiphar is not at home because he's out leading. Potiphar's wife is home. She ends up saying, Joseph, I see how you clean in that pool. You look mighty good. Let me holler at you for a moment. Joseph's like, no, you we good. I got to clean the pool. My master told me to clean the pool. That's what I'm here to do. And she says, no, baby, you ain't finna clean the pool. You finna touch this. And Joseph said, no, I, I, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't do this because, I mean, Potiphar trusted me. Out of all people in the world, Potiphar trusted me, and I, I can't do this. And she said, no, you're going to sleep with me today. And Joseph said, no, I, I don't want to sleep with you. So Joseph runs out the house. She grabs his coat, rips it again. And now Joseph is not only betrayed by his brothers, he's now betrayed by a woman he never slept with. She runs out and says, hey, this man that you brought in the house, he tried to sleep with me. 
and now he's betrayed yet again. I want to talk to you from a little subject called leading while torn. Yeah, I want, I want to talk to you just from a little bit, leading while torn. Let me first say the first responsibility of a leader is to define reality. First responsibility of a leader is to define reality. It's also to translate vision into reality. Just because you have a vision, that means nothing. What means something is your ability to take what you saw in your head and take what you wrote on paper and then manifest it into real life. I'm not against shouting in church. I think it's great. I wish I had feet like Josh Dance. But I'd rather dance at manifestation than to just shout about what God's about to do. And a lot of us shout about what God's about to do because we ain't seen him do nothing because we haven't used principles to get it done. Dude, this is good already. Joseph prospered like a number one by functioning like it was his even though it would never be his. Y'all ain't talking to me this morning, church. Joseph functioned like a number one, like it was his, even though it would never be his. And some of us struggle with serving something else because we end up serving it as long as we can make it ours. There is no success in serving another vision and trying to hijack it and make it yours. You grow by serving it like it's yours, even though it may never be yours. Joseph was a leader, but a younger brother. And this is always true. The reason why Joseph's dream could not be received by his brothers is number one, familiarity will always breed contempt. When people know you, they limit you. If there's not a healthy separation between you and people, they will become common with you and they will not respect who you are. It's always the case. There are very few exceptions to that rule. But because Joseph had brothers that knew, bro, I done smelled your fart before. I done seen you wet the bed. I done seen you do this. And they keep bringing it up, not realizing that Joseph is now a successful person. You ever been around your siblings and they talk about stuff that happened when you were a child? It's like, yo, I'm a whole adult out here. Because family can become familiar and people who are familiar will limit who you can be in their lives. Even, even if, okay, let me back up. Whatever people are familiar with, they devalue. Whatever, it's just humanity, it's not evil. You ever have a shirt you love? When you first wear that shirt, you're like, yo, that shirt is banging, yo. Make sure you hang that up, dry clean it. Then after a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, you ain't treating this. Okay, okay, you didn't feel that example. Your car, ooh, that thing smells. Don't, don't, mm, don't eat in my car. Uh-uh, I don't let nobody eat in my car. Nah, I don't even play around. You'll order Chick-fil-A, you'll put the windows down so it don't feel the scent of your car and change the scent. And then after about three months of making payments, you're like, man, I'm gonna eat in this car. Fries on the floor, old macaroni from Chick-fil-A on the floor, all of that, because why? Whatever you're around long enough, you devalue. It is not evil, it's just humanity. I was talking to our staff about not being desensitized to God's hand on this church because it can get old to you. Oh, they got this? Who cares? Oh, someone did this? Who cares? 
But that's not normal. That's not normal. But here's what happens. Joseph's coat was ripped because you need to know people rip what makes you credible. Now our business prides ourselves on loving people. They're going to kill that. Because people will use whatever your DNA is to justify why it's not authentic. Potiphar was a good, oh, this is so good. Potiphar was a good leader because he saw the hand of God was on Joseph. The hand of God was not on Potiphar. The hand of God was on Joseph. And he was smart enough to know that wherever Joseph was, increase follow. So he said this, I am going to build on Joseph. Because building on you is not the same as building with you. Make it make sense. Joseph, I'm going to build everything on you because the favor of God is on you. Now, I might meet other people that I may build with, but Joseph, you're the man. I'm going to put all of my hopes, all of my eggs, all of my trust in you. I'm going to build upon you because the larger you grow, the larger I grow. Because here's the truth. Potiphar spent all of his money training Joseph to be better. If you don't train those under you, then you'll be stuck with dissatisfaction. Potiphar said, you know what? If you're winning, I'm following you. Listen, if you got friends that are winning, don't kill them. Build with them. Y'all ain't hearing me. Don't hate on other people who are further than you. If you celebrate them, they may open a door for you that you couldn't open yourself. Yeah. I, I remember I was in the gym, uh, me and Babla, we were, <laughs> we were in the gym and, and we were talking to a guy. He had, no, he had no real understanding about stocks or anything like that. And, and he said, you're a preacher. I said, well, that's not all I do. Um, and we started talking about Robin Hood and stuff, and I, and I showed him about how to, how to get this app and, and utilize it for option trades and stuff. I said, I'm not an expert at it, but I have a few friends that do it, and what I recommend to you is you get to know other people who do option trading, and, and you could expand your mind because you're very smart and you're very technical. You could grow and do very well in this, and now he's got hundreds of thousands in his Robin Hood account. Maybe not the best place, but he has hundreds of thousands in his Robin Hood account. Why? Because he took the time to listen to someone else. And now he's way further than I've been in that business. Listen, the saving grace to our community is going to be us doing it together in unity. We, we ain't going to change the world by ourselves. You're not going to impact the world. The world isn't set up for you to change it by yourself. I need you to win because your win is my win. And if we win together, we can do great things in this city. I don't just want to see one of us win because I may not have all the money to buy what I'm trying to buy. But if I put my money with your money and you put your money with the other person's money, we can do whatever we want. Maybe this is, this. y'all need to give another offering for this one. Maybe. The vision God gave you was not just for you. It was for you to partner with someone you trust. You can't have a community without unity. So here it is. Joseph is in this house and he realizes the only reason I'm in this house is because of Potiphar. Don't have selective amnesia. P Potiphar is the only reason. I'm sure Potiphar's wife was fine. Listen, this is not spiritual, please. This is my flesh. I believe you do look better when you have money. 
don't look at me like that because I've seen some of the people y'all dated. Pastor, this is who I'm dating. He got no teeth, no nothing. But I'm like, well, what did you see in him? Pastor, he got a good job. Well, he does look good now. I, I do got to admit. He does. When I tilt my head to the side now, he's so, so Potiphar, Potiphar, Potiphar probably married somebody really beautiful. And I'm sure Joseph was like, man, I would, man, I just, woo. Girl, I can't do that. I don't, you keep playing with me. I, you're going to have a problem. Listen, listen, I ain't the one. Listen, I ain't the one. My daddy raised me. You don't know who my daddy is. My daddy's Jacob. You don't know who I am, but girl, I, I'll tell, I, I, you don't want it. You don't mess with me, girl. And all of a sudden, he said, you know what? I can't take this no more. So he runs out the house. Because here's what you got to realize, y'all. It happens to great athletes. It happens to great people. Sometimes the accusation is greater than the assault. Y'all successful people got to be careful because the accusation is sometimes more lethal than the assault. She said he raped him. This has been going on a long time, but here, here's the thing ha happened, uh, happened to so many leaders. Here's the thing you got to know. Joseph never got to tell his side. He never got to say, no, Potiphar, your, your wife's a... Because if he tells that side, then he's getting killed either way. So here's what you got to learn as a leader that they ain't going to teach you in the textbooks. They ain't going to teach you in college. A good leader is a person who takes a little more than his share of the blame and a little less share of the credit. Let me say it one more time. A good leader is a person who takes a little more than his share of the blame and a little less share of the credit. If you're a good leader, you're going to have to learn how to die sometimes. But I, if, I just, if I just said what I... No, you can't say it because if you say it, you're going to look bad. Now imagine Joseph saying, listen, let me tell you the truth, Potiphar. I want to be straight up with you, G. Straight up. I'm going to keep it 100. 100. Keep it 100 with you, Potiphar. Your wife been eyeing me a long time. When I walked in the room, she saw my biceps and my shoulders. She gave me that wink a long time ago, Potiphar. I don't know if you're not handling your business at the house, but let me tell you something, Potiphar. Your wife been looking at me for a long time. I know you've been busy being a CEO, traveling all around the world. You ain't home, and because you ain't home, she looking for somebody else. Because she said she wanted a man with a lot of money and she wanted a man that had a nice house and she wanted a man that had a nice car and she wanted a man that had other cars but she didn't realize that the man had to work and that man had to work so much that he ain't always going to be home to entertain everything you want. So you want a CEO or you want a husband, you want a father, which one you want because you can't have everything you want because in everything you want you got to give up something. Y'all ain't helping me this morning. I come to teach this morning because the reality is, is a lot of us are so excited about what we think we want. And then when we get what we want, we realize I never wanted that to begin with. Because for every side of the blessing you want, there's another side of burden that is not told to you. I mean, I want, I want a big church. No, I don't know if I want a big church anymore. If I wanted to go to the club, and I pass out, I do not want to go to the club, so you don't need to email me at the end of the service. I'm just, if me and my wife wanted to go to a club, we wanted to dance nasty in the club. Somebody would be out there videoing like this, all this. Man, look at that pastor. That's what these pastors doing with your tithe. They out here dancing nasty on each other. I can't, I can't even go to a church like that. I, I look at the first lady's shoes. She had red bottoms on. That was your shoes. That was your money in the club dancing and all that. And then you say, you want the platform, but you don't want the pressure.
Yeah, because you could be in a meeting and a bunch of people are talking and someone said, man, I can't stand this person. And PD say, man, that's crazy. And then the word get back, not what they said. PD said that was crazy. I weren't even listening to y'all. But your name holds the most weight. So as a leader, always measure your words because people will always try to take a snippet of your sentence and use it as leverage for their own agenda. Ooh, y'all ain't talking to me. Somebody say amen if you're getting this. A leader that's given anything must be able to love it but not fall in love with it. You are not entitled because you are favored. Just because God enlarges your border or stage doesn't mean you are entitled to the border or the stage. A leader must be able to love it but not fall in love with it. You are not entitled because you are favored. Just because God enlarges your borders or your stage doesn't mean you are entitled to the borders or the stage. You ever met people who feel entitled to your time? I called you, and? I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were, I work for you. I see you posting, but you ain't called me back, and? I'm trying to figure out why you didn't respond. I see, unless it's your spouse, that's different. Now, if my spouse called me and I don't call her back, and she's going to be like, hey, what, what, what's going on? She's not on social media, but hey, I, I see you every time. But if you're just somebody, like, no. No, boo-boo, no. No, you're not entitled to this. Time is a privilege that people give you. It's not a right that you have access to. No. No. We were in Atlanta and my mentor lives in Atlanta. The, this is what entitlement does. Because I'm in your city, I deserve to see you. No. I schedule time. And if you're interested, you give me the opportunity for the time. Bro, I called you. And? If you, guys, if you're a Joseph, I'm running out of time. If you're a Joseph and you got a Potiphar that gives you access, that gives you access. Access is worth more than money. Some of us squander our access. If a leader or Potiphar gives you access, use it. Don't abuse it use it hey man I called you well I didn't want to call you because I know you're busy Negro if I called you then that means I'm not busy because Potiphar sometimes is giving you a call not because he has nothing to do but because every conversation with Potiphar is a building block Ready? Here it is. When you're a leader, you must learn how to lead while leaving pieces of you behind. You, you must learn how to lead while leaving pieces of you behind. Because everybody will tear you, and when they tear you, they won't give your garment back. You got to learn how to lead and still be torn. You got to learn how to lead with pieces behind you. Ooh, next week I'm going to teach y'all, you can't try to harm those who hurt you because there's no healing in going backwards. Sometimes you make yourself more sick trying to fix something that can't be fixed. You got 
to learn, there's no successful leader that doesn't have their garments ripped. It's a dog-eat-dog world. It's like that in business. It's like that in real estate. It's like that in church. It's like that in singing. It's like that in a music ship. It's like that in any industry. It's a, as long as humans are in it, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. People say, man, I, man, if I could be him. I don't know if I want to be him. The amount of people shooting at him, and when they can't shoot at you, they start shooting at your spouse. And then when they can't shoot at your spouse, they shoot at your children. And you got to be mature enough to watch people comment about you that don't even know you and you not respond because if you respond, you make their post valid. Talk to me, church. They're over the time about, oh, you and your ugly spouse. And you go in there, you little da -da -da. now screenshot it. Now a comment that no one would have followed is now popular. Now here's one thing I say. I ain't gonna let you build a stage off of me. Not somebody I don't know. Someone I know, absolutely. That's my job. My job is to put you on a stage to go higher than where I've ever been. That's my dream. That's why I exist. That's what I'll do for the rest of my day. But what Satan will do is he'll try to kill what you love to do so that you stop doing it so the hand of God will take it from you. The greatest, so as a leader, you deal with yourself with your head, but you deal with people with your heart. Hear me, church. Hear me, church. As a leader, you deal with yourself with your head but you deal with people with your heart. And let me tell you something. I've learned this time and time again. If you lose with one person because they did not see your heart, God will always raise up someone else who will. I'm telling you. I, you know... I can say. Um, when you've been betrayed, you view things differently. Now, we read Joseph's story of his success, and we're like, man, he's so successful, oh my God. But you can't be betrayed and view life the same way you did before you were betrayed. Some of you can't receive real love because you've been betrayed so much, you don't know what's authentic. When you've been betrayed, that's a whole nother level. Think about being Joseph. You got betrayed by your brothers. You didn't even do anything wrong. You just told them you had a dream. You ain't say like, you know, you know, you didn't tell them they're going to be serving you, but I mean, it didn't happen. You just like, yo, this is a dream. You didn't go to bed and have this dream. You had a dream and you just shared your dream. And then you shared your dream and now everybody's killing you because you shared your dream. And then you get sold into slavery and then it works for your good and now that makes people even more upset because they try to kill you and it ended up promoting you. And then now you're finally getting settled in this foreign house and now the wife is on you and then all of a sudden now she's betrayed you and now Potiphar throws you in jail for two years even though you didn't do anything wrong. I will tell you that whatever dream God gives you, you will suffer for. Can you imagine sitting in 33rd for two years for something you ain't do? You got a hard bunk bed. It's cold. If you good looking like myself. Can you imagine a guy, Big Joe, like, stand up, Joe, stand up so they can see. Can you imagine, Joe, I'm over there, we talking about the commissary come in, and it's only one, and it's between me and him. He going he to eat. I'm not going to eat. He going to eat every time, yo. He going to keep eating. Oh, yeah. Joe, give me some commissary, man. I can't afford it. 
And all of a sudden you're thinking to yourself, I ain't even do nothing wrong. The only reason why I'm here is because I trusted God. I'm trying to tell you, y'all, you're going to need some friends that know what it is to trust God and be incarcerated for it. Because every high performer bleeds. You want to be a principal? You got to deal with, the, you gotta deal with the, all the dysfunctions that come. Je Joseph is in prison. I got seven minutes because y'all get hungry. Joseph is in prison. And uh, he meets a person who says, um, I got a dream and I need it interpreted. And now he gets an opportunity to use his gift. He I'm a dreamer. That's what I do. I'm a dreamer. It's, it's when I was 12, I was dreaming people would die. And I would tell my parents, and they laughed at me. My parents didn't understand it. They were like, well, you know, I don't know what you were dreaming, whatever. The person that I thought I dreamt of, she got hit by a Disney bus on my birthday. Till this day, I dream people die. And I used to say, God, I don't want to be known as the guy that dreams you die. But sometimes God warns you. But you're going to suffer for your dream. So he dreams. And, and he's, he's, he, he's interpreting this dream. And then he tells the guy, when, if you get out of here, dude, don't forget me. Two years go by, the guy totally forgets him. Because you got to remember as a leader people only remember what benefits them. Two years later, he realizes, oh, snap! Potiphar has a dream. Is like, I need it interpreted. And the guy says, oh, yeah, back in when I was in prison, there was this guy in there. I forgot about him. Yeah, this dude, he interprets dreams too. Uh, I think his name is Joseph. So they call Joseph, and Joseph comes before the king, interprets the dream of the king, and the king says, no, oh, this is so good. Joseph was thrown in prison by who? Potiphar, the king. The king now has a dream. And Joseph gets told that Potiphar wants to see him. The same man that threw him in jail. The same man that has him in there for doing something that he knows he didn't do. Joseph says to himself, the king wants to see me? He goes, shaves his face, cleans himself up. Because even though you're wrong, I still got to honor you. And that's where your leadership is tested. Can you stand before Potiphar, who threw you in prison, and still shave your face, have the same respect? Some of you are like, oh, heck no. Until your bandwidth grows, you ain't going to be able to lead high. Because you got to be able to walk in rooms with snakes and not let them know, I heard you hiss. <laughs> you got to be able to walk in the grass and hear them and act like you didn't hear them. Because a good leader never shows his hand. He never shows his hand. Got to be able to listen to and that same God bless you. I'm believing for your future. I'm so glad you made it. I'm so happy for you. You see, I commented on your picture. Congratulations. You know, it's the worst thing in the world is when you're in love with a snake. have been in bad so long that bad seems good okay all right here it is here it is here it is Colin Powell says the day soldiers stop bringing you their problems is the day you stop leading them 
they have either lost confidence that you can't help them or concluded that you do not care. Either case is a failure of leadership. Two things to be careful of. Number one, if people stop coming to you, you stop being their leader. Right? But number two, the day soldiers stop bringing you their problems is the day you stop leading them, period. The day people stop coming to you that used to come to you, you stop being their leader. That's number one. They have either lost confidence that you can help them or they concluded that you don't care. Either case is a failure of leadership. Let that sit in your heart. Let, listen to this. This is worth writing down if you're an employee, staff person, whatever. It works. Leading, like Joseph showed, leading for a check will always get you paid. Leading with your heart will get you promoted. Leading for a check will always get you paid. But leading with your heart will get you promoted. All right, I'm going to close with this. Not because I don't have more, but because I think I've given enough. So leadership requires a tear. And that's how you grow as a leader. You grow your bandwidth when you tear. Even though the betrayal was terrible, it was helpful because it taught him how to be more calculated. Joseph was too quick to tell you what he thought. I see God about to do this. Sometimes you need to measure your words. He became more calculated. That's number one. The reason why people underestimate you is because you're too calculated. You're not calculated enough. Right? When you first get married, you say what you feel. When you've been married a little bit, you become more calculated at when you say it. Right? It's not what you say. It's also how you say it, and it's when you say it. Number two, you become more strategic. A leader that's not strategic will not be successful. You just can't make a bunch of moves because you're a mover and shaker. You got to be strategic to make sure you have the bandwidth to make those moves. Let me tell you, if you're a, follow, if you're a mentee following a mentor that has no strategy, you're not following a mentor. Some of us, what we call mentorship is just someone who needs people to follow them because they have low self-esteem. Strategic. He became more strategic. He became more strategic. You can't be so calculated. You got to be more strategic. They shouldn't see you coming. They should hear it. You talk too much. You tell too much. You got to know the right, you got to, number one, you got to know the right rooms to talk in. Because someone wants your seat. Leadership is lonely. And if you're not willing to be alone, don't be a leader. It is. You get to a certain place of leadership where you don't want new friends because you can't trust them. We all are growing in leadership. And there are some, and leadership, conflict is the crucible 
which makes great leaders. And you might be saying, God, why keep going through these things? It's, it's a part of your leadership development. It's not always fun. I'd rather learn it through a textbook, but sometimes God won't let you learn it through a textbook. He needs you to learn it through life. And if you're a leader, you will be betrayed. Get used to it. Get over it. It's a fact of life. But if you try to hurt those that hurt you, you'll never heal. And there's nothing worse than following a wounded leader. Because instead of him being a mentor to you, he becomes a tormentor. So guys, girls, find healthy spaces where you can vent about being a leader, being a mother, being a father. You're a dad, great. You're a father. The hardest job in the world is to be a father. Everybody is putting on their own things as being a father. You got to have money to be a man. You got to have this to be a man. And trying to juggle all those things can become overwhelming. I'm trying to be your man crush Monday. I'm trying to win in the bedroom and win in the bank account. I'm afraid to get pulled over. wake up thinking my sons might be a victim because they look like me. I think they may get discriminated against against opportunities because of who they are. And a holiday that the world doesn't celebrate at all and then they critique you on why you're not being the best you're supposed to be. And then you're measured by people who have filters. And then you're told you're supposed to be at this point in your life. And then you're told you're supposed to be at this point in your life. And then you're supposed to be told you're at this point in your life. And then when you get to that point, you're told that there's another point that you need to get to. So you're always traveling, never arriving. You need healthy spaces. One more time. Father, I thank you for the word of God. Thank you for all that you said. Thank you for what you've been saying. Thank you for how you've been saying it. Help us not to be afraid, to be vulnerable, to find peace in conversation. So my dear brothers and sisters, I pray that God would rest his hand upon each and every one of us as we develop being leaders, as mothers, as fathers, as we show our children the way, as we show our nephews the way, our nieces, Help us to do it well. Help us to do it effectively. And for those that don't know the greatest leader of all time, the leader of leads. And today is Father's Day. What greater day than to submit and surrender your life than Father's Day. And I don't know if you had a natural father. Maybe you didn't, and maybe it's a hard concept for you to understand a heavenly father. But there is a father that cares for you. And we don't just get dressed and do all these things because we just want to. We do it because we know this Father is real and he's true. And I'm asking you right now, if you don't know the Father of your soul, that you make peace with him. Because souls are leaving this earth left and right. They're not even promised 60. They're not even promised 70. They're dying at 30. They're dying at 40. And as much as I would love to be able to stand over your body and say that you made it into the pearly gates, it's got to be a decision that you make. And how do I make that decision? I must acknowledge I'm a sinner. My sins betrayed him, put him on the cross. He was crucified, hung on the cross for me, buried three days, and resurrected from my sins. He left me the helper of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's job and responsibility is to ensure that I could live like him, the greatest leader of all time. 
And if you're in this place or you're online, I want you to join with me by making this public proclamation of faith. By saying, Father, I come to you a sinner in need of grace. My sins have put you on the cross. And today, I acknowledge my sin. I ask you, forgive me. Holy Spirit, help me grow and be better in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you'll save my soul, that you'll watch over my soul. I invite the Holy Spirit to help me to grow and to be better in Jesus' name.